everybody, and welcome to the Buckeye Bro Show. This is the show where we talk about Buckeye football, Buckeye basketball, Buckeye things. Okay, and uh, we every other every once in a while we talk about some other things as well when we see fit. Uh, I am your host Alex Bryan, aka King Buckeye, and I am here joined as always with my Buckeye Bro and co-host Hot Wheels Travis Napper. How are you, Travis? I'm doing all right. I've had a couple days to kind of get my mojo back and get my happiness back and find the bright spot in all of this. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Before the show's over, I'm probably going to cry. I need you to cry for me. And uh, rejoining us, uh, he's been on the show a couple times with us. You know him as Ill Will. He is Ill Will. Will Canty. What's up, Ill Will? Yes, yes, yes. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? You boys ready to talk some things today? No, <laughs> I will if I have to. I mean, preferably. I mean, I mean, yeah. That, that we we almost have to. This is what we do, right? I'm sure the peoples would like it if we would do so. So yeah, I will try so, to do so. Yeah, so we don't waste our time. Obviously, for sure. All right, folks. Uh, today we're unfortunately very reluctantly. Going to recap the national championship game, Ohio State versus Bama. We'll give you our general thoughts and the reasons why the Buckeye lost, the Buckeyes lost, and uh, what we feel the Buckeyes will need to do going forward to avoid a similar demise in the years to come. Uh, we'll give you Keen's ransom per usual. Got four games on the docket this time for the NFL. Uh, I'll give you my picks on that, and hopefully this time I won't accidentally be muted for it. Uh, <laughs> I think we got that issue fixed, hopefully, right? Uh, then we'll uh, we'll dive into some college football for next year. We'll give you teams that we see being contenders for next year. We'll give you teams that we see being pretenders for next year. And we'll go ahead and give you our playoff picks and explain all that to you. Uh, then we'll give you, as always, Hot Wheels Hot Takes. I uh, can't wait for that. And uh, since Ill Will's on the show, you know we're going to give you Ill Will's words of wisdom, always. And then uh, we'll finish the show by talking about the Urban Meyer sitch that happened uh, not even like an hour or so ago. So uh, let's just dive right into it, boys. Um, a very, very sad, 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 sad game happened on Monday. Um. We hoped and prayed that we would come into the show not being depressed. And unfortunately, we're as about as depressed as we can be. I mean, if you see my background, it's a giant crying emoji. Um, that doesn't even begin to uh, put my feelings into perspective on this whole debacle that was that championship game on Monday. Um, obviously, Ohio State did not score first on their first possession. They were down seven to nothing. Uh, both teams would battle uh, until it was 14 to 14. And around that time is when everything started going south. Uh, Bama would score again. Ohio State would settle for a field goal after another Bama touchdown. Uh, they would go into half at 35 to 17. Uh, basically all but over at that point. But if you looked at the Florida game, they were down 35 to 17 against Bama too, so we kind of had some hope. Uh, and then we started the second half uh, by holding them to a field goal. We would score a touchdown to be only down by 14, and then the rest was history um, as Bama would score a couple more times and make the final score 52 to 24. Alabama, once again, holding up the freaking trophy. So, uh, Travis, I'll. Uh, I'll start with you, my man. <sighs> man, that sucked. Absolutely sucked. Um, first and foremost, I I'm still proud of this team. You know, at the end of the day, they got there. We got past Clemson. That that's one thing that I think at least every Ohio State fan can take pride in. We got over the Clemson hurdle. The curse is still broken, you know. Everything went our way for the most part up until this game. And, you know, yeah, the score looks pretty bad. 
But I also feel like that score doesn't actually tell the whole story. Because as much as people say, and you know, we did, we got curb stomped by Alabama, plain and simple. But I also feel like we were hanging with them pretty well until, like you mentioned, that time the drive where we settled for a field goal kind of just took the air out of the balloon and set this thing on a bad track to nowhere. Um, I know there's been a lot of criticism of the play calling. I have some criticisms of the play calling as well. Not as much as some of the people that I've seen. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it was too many circumstances that just put this Ohio State team behind the eight ball. Does that excuse the fact that they got the doors beat off them? No. Is it an excuse that Alabama kicked the doors in? No. But you saw what happened little by little. The things just started to pile up for this team. And they got a lot of breaks in this game, to be perfectly quite honest, especially late in this game. Um, So they still should have had every possibility to make this a game. But as much as the talent gap is pretty far so far between Alabama and Ohio State, at least as it was in this game, I still think that Ohio State is a little better than everyone is giving them credit for in this game just because they only scored 24 points, even though they had quite a few opportunities to score more than that. All right, Will. Thoughts? Man, look, what starters, I'm a movie buff. So I'm not sure if you guys ever seen The Equalizer, one or two. But basically, I've just seen three. Okay. <laughs> This may, you know, Alabama showed up, Ohio State showed up. And just like the movies, you know, you know, Denzel always kind of, you know, give the, the bad people a chance to do the right thing. And when Alabama showed up, they kind of gave Ohio State a chance to do the right thing. But nevertheless, he ended up working them over. That's what happened in this game. Yeah, it, it was a close game when it started. But then, just like Equalizer, he destroyed everybody in the end. Basically, that's what this was. Those guys could not cover anybody. Um, they just they, they just couldn't stop anybody. They, they looked confused on defense. So it, it's almost like they were really almost scared to play. And, I mean, that should never, ever be have to be said about any team, let alone the Ohio State Buckeyes. But nevertheless, they, they, it, they didn't come out with that energy to, to keep on continuous matching it. And, and it's kind of unfair. Because Alabama, they reload just like any other team reloads. But they they basically had a three-headed monster. A complete three-headed monster that the 11 guys on defense had problems stopping. It really wasn't even the other guys on Alabama, the other eight guys, even though they contribute. But the other, the main three guys, they had problems stopping them with 11 guys. So from that standpoint, it's back to the drawing board with Ohio State. Um, I, I'm just not sure what the really more I can really say about that. It's just they showed up. They they thought they were ready. And then Alabama reminded them why they wasn't ready. That's fair. Game over. Uh, where do I even start with this? You know, I think back to Clemson 2016. And I... I Urban Meyer's words reverberate in my head. I'm not used to this. Ohio State's not used to this. And we will not get used to this. Um, And then the following two seasons, we proceeded to get the doors blown off of us by two lesser conference opponents. And apparently Ohio State was getting used to this. Um, Then upon days higher, obviously last year, was probably one of the most dominant seasons for Ohio State football I've ever seen, beating everybody we did by double digits. Um, And then basically, let's face it, getting robbed against Clemson in the semifinal in a game that we should have won by double digits. Um, You know, I, I thought these days were behind us. And I know that we had pretty, we, we arguably had more going against us this year than any other team. I mean, we we were part of a conference that canceled abruptly 
uh, decided to come back. Uh, basically went from 10 games in 18 weeks to nine games in nine weeks. So given us zero room for error, um, a stupid rule gets put in place that was poorly thought out uh, in general. And you think about it, well, oh, we won't have COVID issues, the Big Ten said. We'll be, all, we'll be okay. And then what happens? Ohio State gets some COVID, or Ohio State's opponent gets some COVID issues. Game number one's canceled. Then we have COVID issues all of a sudden. We, we decide, okay, let's cancel this game so we can make sure we can play our last two games. And then what happens? The arch rival says, <coughs> God, I can't taste anything. I think we should cancel. So they canceled too. And then we got put in a predicament. And then, of course, oh, Ohio State got the rules changed for them. A rule that should have never been in place. And then we get to go play for the Big Ten title. And rightfully so. We win. We get to the playoff. And we're thinking to ourselves, cool, we're undefeated. Let's try to get this revenge against Clemson. I don't think any of us saw what happened happening when it came to the Clemson game. Like, we blew the doors off them. So, of course, we're feeling a little bit confident going into this game. If they can just replicate or somewhat replicate that offensive game plan and do better defensively, we have a shot. And neither have. Neither. I I looked at a stat, and I'll, I'll go to you next, Travis. I looked at a stat, and I've I've read it. I I don't know <laughs> if I did it on this show, but we did it on our preview show on Score on Air Network Facebook page. If you guys want to go check that, even though the game's over, but you can go check it out. Still, uh, we did a go watch the stuff. Right, we did we did a tail tailgate edition of the Buckeye Bro Show. Um. I, I, I gave out the stat that Alabama was 127 out of 127 teams in college football on pass defense against tight ends. They literally suck. They can't cover tight ends to save their life. They've given up like over 600 yards of tight ends, 50 catches. You name it, they did it. And how many completed passes did we throw to a tight end against Bama? One. That one-hander. It was a good, was a good one. one. <laughs> Another one-hander <laughs> by the Jeremy Rucker. Like, good lord, God, was that, that kid beautiful. can just one hand grab. If he doesn't make it to an NFL team and have a long career, something's wrong. Because that kid is yeah. good. He is gifted. That was special. But the fact that it just wasn't a part of the offensive game plan that just blows my mind. They had to have known that stat. They had to have seen it on film. Like Kyle Pitts was eating them alive from Florida. So how did they not see this, Travis? I, I I don't get it. I you know I think there's a lot of things that they didn't see, and unfortunately, I think it was because they panicked. Trey Sermon going down two plays in does not help. Two thousand six Florida Arena Bell. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it does. It really does. Um, because I'll, I'll read you off a couple other things. This team had a total of 29 carries rushing spread across four guys, really five. Um, 15 of them went to Master T. That is unacceptable to me. Agreed. I get it. Trey Sermon went out. I get it. Not everyone is a big fan of Master T, but T should have had at least 20. At least. 20. You are trying to be a running team. That has been your bread and butter since I can remember even since I've been alive. Right. Run the freaking ball. And then you started to actually run it with Justin Fields. And I get it. You don't want him to get hurt. I don't want him to get hurt either. But it's the national freaking championship. Right. This is what he came back for. This is what he's playing for. This is what all of them came back for. You have to try it. And it, it worked. He had six carries for 67 yards. Teague had two touchdowns. Granted, some of them, I mean, one of them was pretty easy because they got a fumble on, like, what, the 20 yard line? The only good thing but for Ohio run, State that night. Run the freaking ball. 
It drove me nuts. It drove me nuts too. Um, you know, for and like everybody's criticizing the defense. I'll criticize the freaking offense. Right. I get it. Justin Fields was hurt. And, you know, I still give him all the credit in the world for going out there and performing and playing. I don't really think he did terrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. But, man, you should have put the ball in his hands more. And you should have put the ball in Master Teague's hands more. I get it. Trey Sermon was running all over teams. Master Teague is not a, a an explosive running back. But he still is going to get you a good three, four yard, yards with every catch. His average was four. I will take that every day of the week. Yes, sir. Please and thank you. Because that still gets you in good position. It gets you in third and manageable. It gets you in two and manageable. Good opportunity to throw the ball. Quick passes. Short passes if you have to. To a tight end who can probably get you the remaining four or five yards that you're probably going to get. Yeah, their, their entire offensive game plan, I think, hinged around Trey Sermon. And when that injury happened to him two plays in, they panicked. They really, really panicked. I agree. I think once Sermon went down immediately, Ryan Day kind of got a little shell shock. Uh, well, and the other thing that ticks me off is they even said in the broadcast that when T came to the sideline, he's like, oh, we're going to win this for Trey. We got to run for Trey. And then you hand the ball off to him only 15 times. Right. And then when... So I'm not screwing in this for Trey. Right. And then, and then not only that, but then you see them trying to use Teague like he is Trey. This, this, these are two different types of running backs here, folks. This, this is Master Teague, who's like a Beanie Wells type, who's literally bulldozed down the middle. You either do a draw play, either side, up the gut, you you can get away with maybe a you know a sweep around the end, but you shouldn't because he doesn't have the juking ability or the speed to do so. I mean, it, it, it's barely going to work if you try to run him like a Trey Sermon. Now, if Trey had played, our offensive game plan probably gets us like forty some points. We might still lose because our defense really sucked, but we're it's not nearly as embarrassing as what we saw. And I agree with you, Justin Fields. Why Why wasn't the game plan after Trey goes down to say, here you go, dude. We're letting you lose. Do it. We're do, do it. Like, as much as I hate to say it, JT, do the JT, the JT thing. Read option? No, I don't want him ha- I don't want have him having like 15 carries like Teague, right. but he give him four extra carries. That's a good day for him. Um, and if Teague has 20 or more, that's fine by me. Uh, but overall, man, it just the entirety of and the offensive line disappointed me, too, to be perfectly honest. They were not getting right. any sort of push at all. Right. Um, and, you know, and to a certain degree, you almost can't blame them. Like we, we've talked about it. this Alabama team was just. Ready to play. You had to go score for score. Had to. You had to. And for the and for the most part, we did that. And it's just once they settled for that punt or settled for the field goal, excuse me, which even the game plan there, if you look at the last four plays that were in that punt, uh, incomplete pass to Garrett Wilson, Master Teague run for two yards, incomplete pass to Luke Farrell. So they tried to get the tight end involved there. But it was a little bit too late. Um, I would have tried to run at least twice and then go for the pass. I think if you are this team, this high state team, you should have tried to run it up their th- run it up the gut at least right. twice. And if it didn't work, throw the throw the ball into the end zone. It, it it just confuses me because not only did they not like really try to attack with tight ends like they did against Clemson, and look how that game turned out. Uh and this is Obviously, the worst pass defense versus tight ends in in the entire country, and now they're national champions. You don't even bother to try to really get the ball to your tight ends more than your star wide receivers. Guess what? You start popping it to Jeremy Rucker or Luke Farrell here and there. Guess who's going to get open? Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. Then you hit them home for the home run, and all of a sudden, you're going score for score with Bama. 
But that didn't happen because they got all panicky that Trey was out. Well, guess what? You got some other running backs too, guy. You got Teague. You got Crowley. You just do what you do with them. It, just because Trey, Trey, nobody, nobody even really knew much about Trey until the Michigan State game. I mean, I did because I watched him at OU and a lot of other people did. But there were probably some people that were like, I, this Trey Sermon guy transferred here from Oklahoma. I don't know if he's any good or not. And then all of a sudden he has a great game against MSU and you're thinking, ho, ho, we got a gem here. And then, of course, he breaks the school record. And then you're just salivating all over the fact that we have this guy. And then, of course, our luck, you know, already being down key players, you know, he just goes and gets hurt in first play. And then, uh, like he said, the panic mode hit in. Uh, Will. What what do you think were like some of the biggest things of why we lost? Some of the biggest things. I agree with you guys with some things and disagree. To me, if evolving the tight end, to me, it wasn't going to help much. Yes, you can evolve the tight end with them short plays, but the only reason the tight ends will be open is because they're allowing that. Once the, the defense would have tightened that up a little bit, then we're right back to the same thing. The run game, it was probably only about a 30 or 40 yard difference between the teams as far as the, the rushing stats. All right. 10 yards. Yeah. To basically, so that that really didn't make too much, you know, but it it was it was just a passing. The DBs were all over the place, but where they needed to be. There, there's no reason that you allow one person to get 12 in the first half. That's a complete game stat that that individual got just in the first half alone. That's what that was. Then once you start adding other receivers into the mix, they, they had a pretty good balance. You know, the, the next receiver caught eight balls for 81 yards. You know, Harris caught seven for 79. So, I mean, those three right there, that's enough. That, that's kind of enough when you throw the rushing in. That's why they feel like they got blitzed. It just, they, they couldn't keep up. Involving the tight end would, wouldn't matter that much, in my opinion. Yes, you know what? I would have ran it more. Maybe that would have that would have helped Fields, but you know, throwing only for 194 yards against a Bama team that's normally stacked on defense, and, and then you, you only grab up what, what Travis you said about what 20 yard difference or 10 yard difference? Yeah, it was right? a 10 yard difference. You know, that, that's not good enough. That's not enough firepower against a team that can score that quick. This is ba- this team was basically the freaking Kansas City Chiefs of, of college football. That's how quick they are scoring on teams. And they had nine they had nine more carries. And it's st- like still we were only ten yards. <laughs> oh, we bottled Najee Harris up. And that that was the one yeah. thing about our defensive game plan we did right. He and I gotta give him credit. I appreciate the fact that he gave us credit after yeah. the game. I, I really res- I respect that out of Najee Harris. That, so I, I gotta give got, him props. He, but he got ten yards less. On, yeah. On, on what? On, on twelve less carries. In his defense, so did they really need him? Because no. Devontae Smith, you know, he was. But- you, you know that balance attack. Sean, Sean Wade couldn't cover a freaking air mattress at this point. So, I mean, did they really did, did, did they really need him when Sean Wade can't cover Devontae Smith? To be fair, yes, I do think they actually still did need him. Um, because if you saw some of the, the plays that he made, he was good at getting them the extra yardage that they maybe did. Because there were quite a few times where they were close to three and out. And if not for a couple of runs where he just could not be brought down. And I'm going to say this right now. That is not on the defense. That is on Najee freaking Harris, who is trained and taught how to be a quality running back. That is strength. You You cannot move him. You can't beat that. That's just beast mode. Like, there, there is really no real way to stop that unless you just straight up gang tackle him and bring him down. And sometimes even that wasn't right. enough. So all the people saying, oh, the, they couldn't even stop. No, I know why they couldn't stop him because he is so freaking strong. I saw him dragging people. That's not on the defense. That's on Najee Harris for being a really good I'm running I'm so player. glad he didn't go to the team up north. 
Oh, Amen. Jesus that. Christ. That would have been so awful to try to deal with. Well, he would have been underdeveloped there. Let's be real. But uh, he definitely got he well, definitely he, got he developed was, at the highest level where he went. But he would have been the only offensive firepower right? there. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty pretty much. It's easier to stop him when he's the only thing going. Show there. of hands. Hard. Show of hands though. How many how many of you are going to forever see the image of Tough Orland trying to chase down Devontae Smith in your head for the rest of your life? Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh. I, I felt so bad for him because he looked like he was injured, but but still trying. It wasn't the fact that he was running. My main thing is look at his head. The way his head was moving, I literally felt scared. Like, yo, this dude's head's about to fuck. He's going to bust blood vessels and everything. He was trying his hardest and his darndest. I give him the effort, but come on, some, somewhere, if that didn't tell you that they messed up somewhere, then I don't know what. You know what the sad part is? He was our leading tackler. Yes, he was seven tackles. With you seven know, seven tackles. And you know what's sadder? I'm glad he's gone. I'm I'm so happy he's gone. Great I think point. it'll be good for him. I think it'll be good for everybody else to be right. honest. And it'll be good you. for both parties. Um, you know, we kind of talked about this with Andy and Will like yesterday. We were kind of just shooting the breeze. He's not been the same since he got injured. He really has. It's, it's it's unfortunate because you you never want to see that in a player. You never want to see that happen, especially when it's your team. He just was never the same since he got injured. And it's unfortunate because he's a heck of a guy. I love the name. I, I will forever always love the name, but right. he just never was the same. He's still a he's he's a heck of a player when it comes to physicality, but when it comes to every other intangible, he just he's just a step below. It it's uh ever right, ever since that Achilles injury, he hasn't been the same, but he's always been slow. And unfortunately, in this era of college football, if you don't have speed at every position, you will get exposed. And we saw that in the 06 and 07 national title game. We had a lot of slow people. And guess what happened? We got our asses handed to us. And we have a lot more speed than we did then. And we still got our asses handed to us. And this is a little random, but do you think he would have benefited from being in a different position? Like on the actual line? Like move Dude, Tough Orland the defensive think, line. Yes, man. I he's not fast enough to get around. There he doesn't have to be as quick. If he's especially if he's defensive tackle, he doesn't necessarily have to be that quick. But he has get up. If he's the edge, he's got to be quick. But if he's in the if he's in the middle, he just got to be physical and move blockers. I will say I will say this though in his defense the ga- defensive game plan did not help him either the whole keep everybody in front of you thing well guess what Devontae Smith could still be in front of you and make one move and guess what bye bye he's gone he's yeah. gone I'll, it, I'll apologize right now for saying that ever it, should have it, come it, into it, existence it's right there I really thought that was an effective game plan and should could have been an effective game plan it was not. And, you know, I really thought it would work. I, I'll be perfectly honest. I'll eat the curl on that one. I thought it would work, um, especially with the way they are playing that way against Clemson. I thought it could work, uh, especially if they were, like we said, not trying so much to stop Devontae Smith, but stop everybody else. They couldn't stop everybody else. That's the problem. It didn't really matter that Devontae Smith got it. Like I just said, I actually even said this. It doesn't matter if he gets – uh, 10 carries, three touchdowns. How many did he get? 12 carries, three touchdowns. As long as they stop everybody else. Najee Harris, 7 to 79, one touchdown. Slade Bolton, 3 of 16, but the one touchdown. John Mechie, 8 to 81, zero touchdowns, but still 81 yards. They couldn't stop anybody. That game plan could have worked had they not had so many other wide receivers just gashed. And we even said, you know, you're not going to stop. Bama's offense. Just limit it. And if we could just yeah. limit Devontae Smith, that's a win. Couldn't even do that. Couldn't even do that. Like, Wade, I swear, he took plays off. Honestly. He took plays off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so does every other defensive player. 
You ask any defensive team anywhere, they'll say they take plays off. That happens all the time. You can't take plays off in the natty. You can't. They do it all the time, though. It's a lot covering a receiver like that. It is. You know that. It is. And we all know Sean Wade's out of position. We all know he's a slot corner. Oh, of sure. But it's just the fact that when I... He doesn't play safety like everyone keeps telling me? When I see Devontae Smith running and I see Sean Wade jogging half-ass towards him, I'm like, sell out for it, man. Your draft stocks are already tanking. You might as well give it your all, you know, give it your all in case you do decide to go to the NFL, which I don't believe he's going to do now. And I, if he does come back, I hope he gets moved back to slot corner because that's the only way his draft stock is going to improve again. Because no, I say he gets two games at the outside, and if he doesn't perform better, I agree with you. He needs to move back to which inside. is fair. And obviously, we and, and we'll get into this later with the urban segment, but we could be losing uh, Greg Madison as a defensive co-defensive coordinator. So we we're we're probably going to end up hiring somebody else. Hopefully, we can steal Marcus Freeman away from Notre Dame, and then Ryan Day can say, "Coombs, we want you on this staff. You have earned your money because of the first round draft picks you have produced for us in the in the past, and for the rec- constant recruits you bring in. He's bringing in like six defensive back recruits. The two years he was gone, we were losing out on those guys. He's back now. We're getting them again. He is important, but he should not be play calling." And if we can get a Marcus Freeman from Cincinnati who's going to Notre Dame, if we can steal him away real quick before, you know, he puts on his Notre Dame shirt on Saturdays, I'm all for it because he would be an amazing play caller. It would be him coming home to his school. I It would be perfect. All right. If you want to try Jaden for a night, you know, I'm, I'm down for that too. I'm sure he could be a great play caller, but. You know, Marcus Freeman's proven, so I'd rather go for that. But I just, I'll, I'll give Coombs another year on play calling. But I have a feeling. I think he's earned I have a feeling really it's not going to change much. Just my feeling on it. Because we'll have to wait I've to seen see. him with. At least you're not one of the people asking for him to be funny. Right. That, that's egregious. I, I called a couple idiots out on that today. I said, you're an idiot if you think that. I, I saw them say. Oh, Herb should take him to Jacksonville with them. We don't need him. A uh, bullshit. We don't. Okay. You look, look at what happened without him there. We missed out on. We we lost a DB recruit to Utah when he was not there. Like that does not happen. That does not happen. If he if he is on that coaching staff, and and it's no surprise that he's bringing in six DB recruits and he's on pace to get like a couple more five stars coming in the next class. I mean, this is just who Kerry Coombs is. He's a fireball of energy and guys love him. So that's why we brought him back. He is important, but should he be play calling remains to be seen after that natty. And after this whole season, really, I'm like, eh. really missed Halfley. Let's just put it that way. Really missed Halfley. Cause I feel if we have last year's defense playing in this game, it's a whole different scenario because last year's defense could have shut down those guys, at least limited them. Devontae Smith probably gets limited to like 150 yards and a couple touchdowns, which would be monumentally different, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, before we go to break, though, boys, any any final thoughts on that, on this game? My, my final thoughts are not even so much on the game. It's just the fans. Uh, over the last, what, five days, really four days, since that game, the amount of people and I've I've seen in groups, and I'm, believe me, I've shared it to the groups, so those people will see this. I am sick. I now know why some of our fan base is the most hated fan base in all of college football. That's fair. Dear God, for crying out loud, this... This year was so out of the box, just all over the place. COVID, losing players to COVID, losing defensive players at the very beginning of the year. We talked about this for show after show after show. They lost some people at the very beginning. We lost Cam Brown at the very beginning. We lost a couple players to some legal issues. This team was already depleted. All in one position group. 
Yep, at the very beginning of the freaking season. We made it to the national championship game, and there's still fans out there calling for Ryan Day to be fired, which I want to slap every one of them in the face. Calling for Kerry Coombs to be fired, who I also think need to be slapped in the face. And people just crying just to cry. Give me a break. We made it to the national championship and people still can't be happy. I'm sick of it. We had a shortened season and still made it to the national championship game. And like I said, you know, the score doesn't show it. We had a pretty good showing for some drives. You know, it wasn't perfect. Yeah, we got our doors beat off. But at the same time, we had quite a bit of opportunity in this game to make this a close game. We just didn't have the firepower to do it. Alabama is a hell of a team. They are probably the best offensive team I have ever seen in my lifetime. Give it a rest. Agreed. Calm down a little bit. Act like you've been there. This, this team deserves every ounce of our respect. Yes, it sucked to lose the way that we did. Yes, there are things that they should have done better. But the amount of people that I've seen crying, whining over the dumbest things I've ever seen in college football drives me absolutely nuts, and it makes me realize why some of our fans are absolutely hated. And it's not all the fans. I get it. There's a, It's a very small minority. It's the same with our everything. There's a few idiots that ruin it for everyone else. But my goodness, every fan page I'm a part of. Same. Act like you've freaking been Same. there. Calm down a little bit. And just enjoy the fact that we even had football. And move on with Which your life. Fair. I mean, trust me, folks. I was like five seconds away from uh, throwing my Christmas <laughs> tree to the ground. That's how pissed I was during that game, okay? I get really angry when things go wrong. It, 2016 Clemson, pissed. 2017 Iowa, pissed. Like, you... you you can only imagine. But if you don't believe that we are in the best position to win natties in the future with Ryan Day right now, the way he recruits, the way he coaches, th- this was a bad game for him, yes. But this man has already made it to the playoffs as many times as Urban took us to the playoffs. Twice. And and technically, if not for bad controversial calls, would have made it to the national championship back to back years. It might have won one. We don't know. Our defense was good enough to win it last year, as well as our offense was. We could have definitely won that game. I know a lot of people will disagree, but when we were that elite on both sides of the ball last year, we had a chance. And this year, it just didn't come into fruition on the defensive side of the ball. And the offensive side of the ball decided to have a very lax game. And for a lot of reasons, obviously, and it just got ugly. And that's the thing. Like, you look at the Ole Miss game. They went touchdown for touchdown. And then once they kicked that field goal, they basically said, nah, you win. Because you have have to go score, score for score with them. And you have to try to stop them. Like Urban Meyer said, if you can get them stopped four or five times on a drive, you're good. But we could, we only stopped them, what, once? Maybe twice? Maybe. Like, but by that point, it was it was all but over. Will, any final thoughts on this monstrosity? My final thoughts is basically, guys, a little bit of what Travis said. Relax, <laughs> relax. A, a lot of these players and a lot of these, these coaches is urban's, not really Ryan Days. So just relax. Give him time. Let him do what he can do. I mean, because there's a lot more coaches in, in college football that had a way worse record than this, you know. So give him time, but let let him try to, you know, develop things into his way, you know, his air, his culture, the way he wanted to go. And um, you know, hopefully Ohio State will get back there. And everybody has a bad game. It's just they picked the national championship to have theirs, you know. And it's not that they had a bad game because on most days. 24 points is a lot of points. You can win with that. It's just the other team was much better. They were much more focused and determined at that point. So, you know, just, hey, 
People never fear that they'd be back. And let's be honest, if we do make the playoffs next year and go to the national championship game, it's in Indianapolis. And if they allow fans, guess who the majority of the stadium is going to be filled with if we make it? Yep. Like, we beat the brakes off of Clemson, and people are acting like this team sucks. That's what drives right. me nuts. We beat now, the brakes off of and Clemson. And as I've had time to reflect, that is the silver lining for me, that we got to send those guys home and the last play of the game for them, an interception. Karma is still a beautiful thing. It's still sweeter than the sugar in the sugar bowl. And I can't wait to face them again because I want to do the same damn thing. Try to steal our signs. I just, Good luck. <laughs> I just, I just want to say one more thing. Then we're done with it. Do you guys feel, is it a simple yes or no? Do you feel with this loss from Ohio State because they pretty much put it on Clemson, do you think either they was on an emotional high where they just couldn't really do it? Or, I mean, was they just, you know, like they were burnt out of gas? I mean, what do you really think about that? No, I think the emotional high definitely has something to do with it. For I sure. Agree. It's probably like a Penn State 2017, then going into Iowa the next game with that emotional high and then just getting the absolute daylights beaten out of you. It, I, I saw that. And I think maybe, yeah, they put so much all year into that Clemson game that maybe it kind of, when they got to the championship game, yeah, they were focused, but it was kind of like, well, that was our natty. You know, it, it, like 2014, Bama was their natty. but. Let's face it, Oregon, Alabama, two different scenarios here. You know, we knew after beating Alabama, we're like, we're not losing to Oregon. We turned the ball over four times and still beat Oregon by 22. I mean, but we knew coming into this game, it's like, hey, Clemson was here. Alabama's here. It's not going from Alabama to Oregon. It's going from Clemson to Alabama. It's two totally different scenarios. We had to be ready. And whatever that game plan was and whatever second half adjustments they made, good Lord. I mean, they, they lost a the guy to targeting. They lost, you know, they had they had some key guys out too. They had their starting center out, and we still could not get any form of pen, real penetration. Uh, 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 little, little Mark Fage's uh, reference there. Inside joke. Um, no, but we couldn't get any penetration to go and get Mac Jones. We did not make his life hell, which was one of our keys to the game. And it just didn't happen. So that's it. We lost, but we will be back. We will be Clemson again. We will beat Bama again at some point. And Ryan Day will cement his name in college football as it stands right now as one of the best coaches, even though in my heart he already has. But he will add national championship trophies to the mix. Wow. After one year? Okay. After a couple years. It'll be year three. A couple years, excuse me. Excuse me, a couple years and, and already yep. one of the one best and a half. What? Yeah, basically one and a half. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're gonna go to break here. Uh, when we come back, we got Keen's ransom for you, and then we'll uh, talk about some college football for next year on who our contenders, pretenders, and our playoff picks will be. So we will see you when we get back on the Buckeye Bro Show. This is the Buckeye Bro Show on Score on Air Network. In sports, you want to have a player that can get the job done right every time. A real all-star, somebody that's dependable and you can turn to when the game is tough. That player in the audio-video industry is the Peter. From setting up your home's Wi-Fi network and offices, conference rooms, to setting up home theater inside or outside, to setting up the systems to make your home run smarter and safer as well, the theater people can do it all with the quality of professionalism you can expect every single time. That isn't just a great all-around player. That is an all-star. That is why we are the leaders in audiovisual installation in Central Ohio. So call us at 614-604-6327. Or check out our website at ttpcolumbus.com to figure out which products will fit you. And don't forget, amplify your personality with the theater. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. 
you'll be the star of your very own webcast and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Do you have design ideas for t-shirts where you're not sure where to go? Go to Mojo Sports Gear. That's right, Mojo Sports Gear. At Mojo Sports Gear, you can get custom-made shirts. Whatever design you need, Mojo Sports Gear can provide it. Don't forget to grab a custom-made cap on your way out and rock the best head gear in the game. Give them a call at 614-864-6656. That's 614-864-6656. And we are back on the Buckeye Bro Show. I'm still Alex Bryan here with Travis Snapper and Will Canty. It will on Hot Wheels. Yep. Yeah. What's all up? right? Now that we got the emotional depression out of the way, uh, let's let's lighten things up here with a little Kings ransom. How's that sound? Sounds delightful. Here we go. All right, folks, I'm wearing the black crown because that's how my soul feels. OK, so we are putting on the black crown today. All right. I got four games on the docket this time, boys, and it's all NFL since, of course, college football is over and our hearts are destroyed. Uh, but I know, Travis, I, I'm sorry about your Steelers, too, by the way. I hate to throw you under the bus on that, bud, but uh. Don't lie to me. You're not sad. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I'm not. But um, my Packers are still in it. Oh, me and Will's Packers. I'm sorry. So uh, we 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 still got a horse in this race. Uh, and that's the fir- well, goody for you. That's the first game I'm going to talk about here. Uh, Packers versus Rams. The Packers are a six and a half point favorite over the Rams. Uh, it is in Lambeau, obviously, and the over under is forty five and a half. Um, if you're asking me. The Packers are just playing really well right now. The Rams did look very impressive against Seattle. I think we can all agree on that. Um, Did not really foresee that. Russell Wilson had a hell of a day trying to make anything happen. But, I mean, the Rams, even though they are a sixth seed, they are a really good team. And, you know, that division all year was really stacked. So, it didn't surprise me that they were competitive. I just thought the Seahawks were going to win, obviously. But, you know, even though the Packers defense still worries the crap out of me every single week, uh, Aaron Rodgers is playing on a whole different stratosphere right now. Uh, he will be your MVP. Uh, that is my big, bold prediction. I know, so big, so bold, right? Um, but I would have to say, take take uh, the Packers by, take the points. They're gonna, probably going to win by seven, in my opinion. Uh, so take the Packers in the points. And the over-under 45 and a half, take the under on that for sure. I don't think this is going to be a super high-scoring game. Um, I think uh, the Rams' defense will hold the Packers a little more than they're comfortable with, but uh, they'll manage to eke out a win that's a combined total of uh, under that 45 and a half. So take the under on that. Uh, Next up, uh, Travis, one of Travis's least favorite teams in the whole wide world, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they will take on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the Bills are a two and a half point favorite, and the over under is 49 and a half. This one's tough. What What do you guys think? Who's winning that game? I say the Bills still get okay. it done. I, I, I think that's a great line, though. It is. I don't see them winning by more than really three. Okay. Um, the over under. To me, that's maybe a little high. Probably. I think this will be a little bit more of a defensive battle than that. I would probably take the under on What about you, Will? What about you, Will? Uh, (laughs) Nah, they're going to win more than three. I I don't like that line. Um, The Bills. I'm going with the Bills. No action Jackson on this one. Um, I think he he gonna, I think he gonna focus too much on the run, and you know I I just think they're not gonna get it done as far as the points wise or over or under, uh definitely under I, I I don't see 
I, I don't see them getting almost fifty points a game between the two. I just don't okay. see it. Uh, for me, this this is a, this is a really good battle here. And like I said with the Ravens game last week, this is going to come down to which Lamar Jackson do we get. Um, if we get the Lamar Jackson last week, the Ravens have a really good chance to win this game. Uh, the Bills, they they looked good but not great against the Colts. Um, maybe maybe they're starting to simmer off at the wrong time. Um. But I do think the Bills are good enough defensively to make Lamar Jackson's day not so comfortable. So I am going to take the Bills uh, by more than two and a half. So take the Bills and the points. And the over-under for me, it really, that also depends on Lamar Jackson. Which Lamar Jackson do we get? Um, but I'm going to also say the under just to be safe. Because I think, the way, just the way the Bills looked last week, um, I think they'll defensively be able to hold the Ravens to probably around 20 points and they'll probably get around 24 ish. So it'll, it'll be right under, but uh, I'd say take the under on that as well. All right. The next one, uh, the other least favorite team of one hot wheels, Travis Napper. Uh, this is my first least favorite. Right. Now the Ravens are so wow, really normally the Steelers Ravens is a lot hotter for uh Steelers fans than the Brownies. I got too many, I got too many Browns fans in my, <laughs> my, my DMs. Hey, I mean, I can't blame them. This is a miracle stuff. This is miracle stuff for them. Uh, the Cleveland Browns will travel to KC and take on the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs are a 10-point 10, uh, 10 favorite right now, and the over-under is 55 and a half. Um, For me, I do believe the Browns' magic runs out, but I do believe also that they are going to put up a bigger fight than a lot of people are going to give them credit for. Um, if the Browns can, I, obviously, they're not going to replicate that performance that they did against the Steelers. They're not going to have a first play snap go over Patrick Mahomes' head. That's just not going to happen. Um, just kick me down while I'm down. Why don't they're you? not going to throw three picks. Um, they're not just going to screw up in every fathomable way. Uh, am I right, Travis? <laughs> uh, what? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. All right. Um, <laughs> obviously none of that's going to happen, but the Browns, as long, it, it's like an Ohio State thing. As long as they don't get super lax defensively, like they always seem to do, and their offense can get some movement of the ball and get some points on the board, I think that they can make it competitive. But I don't see them winning this. This is this is a far taller mountain than the Pittsburgh Steelers to them, uh, and in general. Um, but yeah, you take the Chiefs and the points. I think they win by two touchdowns. Um, I think they get like a late touchdown to make it the fourteen points. But I do. I I think it, I think it's going to be a pretty pretty good contest as long as the Browns come in with a good game plan and they can get some stops here and there. Um, and Baker does his thing. I and Chubb obviously too. Chubb's gonna be integral in, it, in in this game, especially, and Hunt. Um, I I see it being a battle up until the end and the Chiefs just pull away because they just got more dogs. Um, no pun intended to the Browns. And uh the over under being fifty five and it was it, it was. The over under being fifty five <laughs> and a half. That seems high. It does a little. I can see that. I can high. see them getting around like 50, 50 combined in this one. ESPN has it at fifty seven. Oh, do they? <laughs> it it must have went up since I last looked. Um, well, if it's fifty seven, I I'll still say take the under. Um, but you know, th this is the one that I look at that I can say, well, this could be an off big offensive battle. But I'll say take the under just because. Uh, you know, I think it'll it'll go back and forth, but it it won't get super out of hand to where this is like a college football score. Um, so yeah, take take the under on that for sure. And uh, the Saints and Bucks round three. Uh, could this be the first time in Tom Brady's career that he's lost to uh the same team three times in a season? I don't think that's happened in his career before. Um, this be so lucky. But I'm pretty because I'm pretty sure I saw the statistic after the Saints beat him the second time that it was the first time in his career that he got shut out by a divisional opponent ever. Um, so this probably would be the first time he's lost to the same team three times. Um, 
I believe Michael Thomas is back and healthy, so that helps the Saints there. The Saints are a three-point favorite, and the over-under is 51.5. This game depends on what Tom Brady shows up. I mean, there's been times this season where we've been like, oh, Tom Brady, he's looking as great as he ever has. And then there's other weeks where we're like, wow, Tom Brady's really washed up. He's just done. Um, I Obviously, the Saints have just been better both times. Um, you know, they're, they, they, they're, they've just been there before. And I do think that they win this game. Uh, I could see it being by three points, though. I I would take I would take the Saints and not the points. Just just because I could see that being super close. It could even be a one point game. Just because I think the Bucs will be better prepared this time. It it's hard enough beating the same team twice in a season, let alone three times. But I think that the Saints will, but it's probably gonna be the closest contest of the three. And the over under, take the under on that too. I think this is gonna be but both defenses are pretty good, especially the Buccaneers. Good Lord, that defense is nice. Um, I don't see it being a super high score affair this time. Uh, the Saints pull it off very, very closely. And that has been King's Ransom. Yeah. Okay. All right, boys. So he declares. So I declare. I need to start saying that. I like that, Travis. You- you re- you need to start sounding a little more regal. Yeah, you know, I could wear I could wear the cape. And not William. I could wear the cape. Hey, hey, I hey. I might hey, start hey, wearing hey. the cape. Hey. I might start wearing the cape. All right, boys. College football season. <laughs> Different William. Different right. William. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. College football 2021. So next season. Who are we seeing as let, let's start with pretenders first. Who are we seeing? Name three pretenders for me that you see for next season. Coastal Carolina. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, probably. <laughs> uh, no, realistically, uh, if we're going by teams that were good this year, I say Georgia's one of them. I know you're kind of high on Georgia a little, a little. bit. I say Georgia. Uh, let me try to pull up the standings from this year. Please do. Go ahead, Will. You got some? Uh, yeah. Um, I hate to say it, but I, I got Georgia in there as well. Um, Why would you hate to say that? Because he doesn't it's want to make you upset, SEC. man. There's too many SEC teams, man. Um, uh-huh. Texas a and Bama. And Georgia, uh, Doug, you know for a fact one of them is not going to get in. Sure. Because we love you, buddy. We don't want to make you sad. Yeah. Man, um, actually, you know what? I take that back. I even hit y'all with a a real sonic boom. If everybody that 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 plays this year for Ohio State or a majority of them return, I, I think Ohio State would be in there. But if they don't, we're not return, doing playoff would, picks yet, Will. We're doing pretenders. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It, it's still going Are, Is an Ohio State a pretender to you? Do they pretend? They don't really pretend, but it's just well, shit, the way they played this year, yeah. The championship game, excuse me. Let me it will. Don't that. make me bring up the LeBron James thing on here. Don't make me do you like right, that. So We're going to say that for Don't make show. me do Watch you like face. that, Will. Like I said, slap yourself. You'll be this emoji. And back in, You'll so. be this emoji when I'm done. Hey. I, then you, you got Iowa State. Okay. Um, Cincinnati. Okay. Yep, Cincinnati. Right. Um, okay. And I'm kind of up in the air with, with Oklahoma and Florida. You know what I mean? Once again, SEC team, right. so... Uh, that that's kind of that's difficult. Those right are your here. pretenders, huh? Okay. Yeah. They need, to, they need to play more. They need to play more team, tough teams. Uh oh. He's gonna change I'll his. Change, but I'm gonna keep Georgia up there just for the moment. I think they'll have a better showing in the SEC than this other team. These other teams that I'm gonna name. Um, Mississippi State. I bet you. No, <laughs> they're beyond a pretender. Really 
Good lord. <laughs> yeah. <they're... laughs> After that LSU game, yeah. everybody was ready to dub them champs, and then <laughs> Notre Dame is definitely one. Can we please stop putting them in the freaking college football playoffs? Please, for the love of the college football gods, can they all we please want to win? That's what it'll be. they want. Notre Dame ain't won in how long? About twenty years. Since eighty-eight. Not when it when it matters. Texas A and M. I I don't see them getting back there again, uh, especially with a full season and a full preseason with the SEC. I think you're going to see a lot of SEC teams really get back up there. And then the same goes for Florida. If Kyle Trask leaves, I don't have faith in that team yet. Um, I want to see what that team looks like without Trask because Trask is really the only reason that team was even really relevant is because he was blowing up teams with his ability, just playing out of his mind and playing Heisman-worthy football. Without him, I want to see what that team's made of. I don't fully believe it. I, Oklahoma was a close fourth for me. Uh, I'm with Will. I. It's always hard to see what's going to happen in the Big 12 because you always get the Big 12 beating themselves up. Yeah. Either every team gets at least one loss or you get a couple of them that even end up with two. Right. It never makes any sense. Okay. For me... Because I've seen some way too early top 25s, and I've seen a lot of different number ones. I've seen Georgia at number one, Clemson at number one, Bama at number one, OU at number one, and those are the main four that I've seen, which I'll get into those teams because that happens to be who I have in my playoff as of right now. Now, obviously, subject to change, but we'll get into that. Um, for me, the pretenders for next year, because Let's face it, AM's probably not going to be anywhere near that. Okay. They lost Cullen Monk. And I just don't foresee them being able to be a one loss team next year. I haven't looked at their schedule yet, uh, but I'm sure once I do, I'll be able to pick at least two or three losses. And that will, you know. Um, I think Notre Dame probably a pretender for next year. They'll be back as an independent. That will kind of help them, I guess. Uh, maybe maybe hurt them in some ways. Have they made that official? That they're going oh, yeah. back. It was only a one year deal. Um, so they'll be. I didn't know if they made a decision or not. Oh, that, that's why I really wanted them to win the ACC. I thought it would be hilarious if they got the trophy the only year they're going to be there, and then they just sit that in the middle of their trophy room with a beautiful light shining all over it, like it's God's trophy, just to be like, <laughs> we joined the conference one year and won it. <laughs> That would have been that would have been <laughs> hilarious to me, um, but I think Notre Dame will be a pretender for sure. Um, losing Ian Book will definitely be the biggest reason why. Although I do think Notre Dame will probably, if they do manage to keep a hold of Marcus Freeman, I do think they will have one of the best defenses in the country next year. But offensively, eh, we we'll, we'll see. The jury's out. Um, but I think Notre Dame's probably a pretender next year. Though I have them in my college football playoff currently, I do think Georgia could end up being once again a pretender. I only have them in there right now as a four seed because I don't know who is returning and who's not totally yet for Ohio State. If, if the certain names I've seen are going to return, then I could see Georgia not being a but you know how this committee goes. They always overrank Georgia. They they even a couple years ago said, yeah, we thought about putting a two-loss Georgia in over a one-loss Big 12 champ Oklahoma, but we just decided it just wasn't justified. Why would you even think about it? There wasn't a choice to be made there. It was Oklahoma. <laughs> Georgia should never. Yeah, I guess it just depends if, if Georgia plays. And Alabama. they had Georgia ranked ahead of us. With one more loss. And they got blown out by somebody too. You know, it, it's like they, they love, they have this love affair with Georgia. And Georgia, ever since 17, has always disappointed. Every single time. Wasn't, isn't there AD, the uh, commi commissioner or the director of the committee? No. He it used to be. every freaking time. You know, 
I, I yeah. think the guy think from Arkansas is. Yeah, you're I right. Think, you're I right. think right. the guy from Arkansas. But I thought at one point their AD was. You never know. You never know. Yeah. But not like he's able to be a part of the conversation for Georgia anyway when it comes to that. But no, it's still the bias in the room for sure. Um. But as of right now, I have them in my playoff, but I do believe that they could be a huge pretender because that's just who they've become, right? They're going on over the 41, like going on over 40 years now without an Addy. I mean, that's as pretender as it gets. So until I see that they can make a playoff again and actually do something with it, you know, I'll, I'll have them as a pretender, but I do feel as of right now, yes, they are in my playoff. I know that's contradictory. Um. As far as the last one goes, I'm going to say Texas. I think I think a lot of people are going to be super high on Texas because of Sark. But let's face the facts, folks. Steve Sarkeesian's record as a head coach, 46 and 35. He has not done very well as a head coach. And but that was before he was with the mastermind that is Nick Saban. <laughs> I've I've heard the music. Usually all his assistants do good their first of two years. And then, then it goes I've heard the music before. I've heard the melody. <laughs> I'm sick of the song. Okay. It, listen, Ohio State's still going to pillage the state of Texas for recruits. It's going to happen. Anybody, especially you Texas fans out there who think Quinn Ewers is going to flip back to Texas, keep praying it ain't happening. Okay. He 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 switched his commit to us for a reason. He knew Herman probably was going to get fired. He could have stayed if he wanted to find out who the next coach would be. He didn't. He chose to decommit and commit to the other school he was thinking about because even though we might not put him in the league, we can still make him a star while he's here. And that's all that matters, right? Millions of dollars down the road, poo-poo on that, okay? We don't need that. Preach, right. preach. We're going to make you a star on college, and then you're going to go get a normal job like normal people. And since you're a quarterback at Ohio State, you can go sell cars or something. I'm going to have to start calling you Alex Sermon. <laughs> and I mean, Quinn, Quinn with that mullet of his, he can go he can go places. That's a, that's a winner's mullet right there, right? That's a winner's <laughs> mullet that that kid's sporting. But. That but I definitely true. think Texas is a pretender. Uh, their fans are all wet over this hire. I, good for you. I mean, yeah, he dismantled us in the national championship game. Guess what? He doesn't have Nick Saban anymore. He's kind of on his own. Um, and there's still a team by the name of Oklahoma to worry about who has dominated that conference for the last six plus years. Uh, good luck. Good luck because you're going to need it. And uh, until I see any sort of a pulse that you're back to national relevancy, you are literally the uh, Wolverines of the Big 12. That's all you are. A tier two program that tries to be a national contender every freaking year. You're not. So just put that dream to bed. It's dead. Shoot the, shoot Bevo down. Put him down. He's Put him out of his misery. It's not happening. Okay? You're a pretender, Texas. Horns down. Okay. I don't know if I should even do a hot take anymore. That was pretty right, good. Was that a little feisty? I'm sorry. That was a little feisty. I've been getting into it with some Texas fans. They're all high and on their high horse, and I just say, pump the brakes and drive slow, homie, because... Woo! Drive slow, homie. Right. Okay, That's I see right. you. I see you, Paul. Right. right. I'm going to start calling you Alex Sherman. <laughs> I, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. All right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, basically, with playoff picks, we'll be talking about contenders anyway, but... Out of outside of your playoff, who who are some contenders outside of your playoff picks that you feel can get into the college football playoff drafts? Um, I think maybe if Oklahoma and Texas kind of implode on themselves, I do think Georgia is a pretender, but I think maybe maybe. This is a strong maybe. We maybe see LSU come back to prominence next year. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Well, it's been a good show. <laughs> LSU? At least, at, at least a little better. Maybe. I'm feeling a little bit out there. Hey, I said I needed a hot Hot Wheels take, Hot Take is the next segment, Travis. 
We ha- I didn't oh, even play man. the intro to it. <laughs> you Are you, you're gonna do two hot takes now. Yeah. Damn. To be fair though, I mean it's really I'm gonna have third degree it's... burns by the time you're done, Travis. Good <laughs> lord. My first three for the college football playoff, it's like it's the easiest ones ever. So it's like it's always difficult to pick the fourth team. So it's like, well, I don't think it's going to be Georgia. I don't think it's going to be that team. It's definitely not going to be that team. Adam texted me and said, you have the crying emoji. I'm dead. (laughs) Yes, I do. (laughs) Because that's my emotions Uh, on the inside. Just weeping profusely. Anyway. LSU. Uh. Unlike you, I have Texas actually being pretty good. I know that, like you said, that everyone's kind of high on Sark. I am a little high on Sark. I get it. He doesn't have Nick Saban. But you also don't have to be that great to get the fourth spot. Um, You just got to not lose that many games. Um, And I want to make this pick, but I know it's not going to happen. Indiana, because I like it. What? I like it. We we've seen with serious. I am. It's not, it was was wisdom yet either. Okay, we're going out of turn here. We are going out of turn here. <laughs> are you serious? I am serious. I like that, that pick. Team is I like that pick. I don't care what anybody says. That team is legit. Their coach is legit. They are a legitimate team. I've been saying it for years. Everyone sleeps on Indiana. They are a good team. I think they will be a 10-1 team next year. They got beat in the whatever bowl game they had. I don't remember who they faced. They didn't have their quarterback. They are a good team. They are a well-coached team, which is very key in college football. They are a very well-coached team. Yes, maybe the talent gap is Indiana here, everybody else here. But at the end of the day, they are disciplined. That is crucial in college football. And if you are disciplined enough, they took Ohio State to the limit. They are a good team. I agree. Our backs wasn't that good. I've been saying it all year. Ohio State, Ohio State was up big. They were. And then all of a sudden Indiana went on a run. Them boys, like, like they could, like they said, Alex, like you said. Wade couldn't cover the ground if he tried. Right. He well, couldn't, he he couldn't cover they, a newborn puppy in an earthquake. Okay. He, man, come on, man. man. Are you are you it's serious? Not, it's not the segment. Well, they beat everybody else. I don't care. They beat everybody well, else. Well, well, well who are your contenders? Points. And if you say LSU, I'm ending the stream. No. I'm not going to say Go LSU. <laughs> don't disappoint me. I just wanted to see his blood vessels pop. LSU. You, it's all right. Contenders, like I said, you know, man. Well, outside of outside of your playoff picks, teams teams that you uh, okay, don't outside yeah. of playoff. I, I'm going to shock y'all with one. Oh, good. Miami. <laughs> End the stream. End the stream. This has been the kidding. Buckeye Bro Show. You know who we are. Bye. <laughs> Northwestern, oh come on, Northwestern. But Indiana gets no love. No, Are you me. Hell no. Jeez. Why? Why should they get love? Cause they had one decent year out of what? They had one more, one less loss. Who cares? One what year. One year. They've been terrible for the last twenty six years. They and lost all of Michigan State. Are you kidding? Who cares? Are you serious? It Miami? Miami. You better go back. Is the U back? Go back and Are they back? back? Are they finally back? Dang. Yeah, they back. How to play they back. Is Tate Martell going to lead them to relevance now, finally, after his downfall? Loses the starting job at Ohio State after he says, oh, it's mine. Then transfers, can't even win the starting job there. Then loses his blonde bombshell girlfriend, Kiki Paso, one of the hottest chicks I've ever seen, right? And oh, he's just, well, let's just throw Tate in there. The U's back, baby. It's back. Get out of here. 
Mark my words. You go back and you're going to be like, oh, man, Ill Will was right. That's why he ill. That's why they get bent over by Clemson all the time, right? Uh, it's it's Clemson, so... They are with, winning some other key but, games. But Indiana, though, get bent over by the whole Big Ten. Get the man. They lost. They got, they got, they got, they got skull dragged by North Carolina, sixty-two to twenty-six, and then lost to Oklahoma State, who doesn't know how to play defense. Right. The U. But we're uh, talking about Indiana. Yeah. Yes, Indiana. A team that can play defense. Right. Oh my They were, God. they were top five in interceptions Damn. in the country. Who's now, granted, now granted, third? Northwestern was your two. We gotta, we gotta write this trip. Yep. One, one, who's you your other contender? Who else you want? We got one Six more. One. You got one more. Make this good, please. Uh, please say Buffalo. <laughs> Do it. Make my day. You know what? Hell, it could be anybody. But it, it shit, you, you can put Coastal Carolina like you said. I call them a contender. <laughs> they uh, give, give us a give us but, a legit one because we all know that all the non power five teams don't have a path to the playoff. That was proven this year. Oh yeah, big time. Uh that's BYU. BYU is that power BYU. five. Try again. You said something like other than power five. No, I five. said I said a team that is power five because group of five schools don't have oh. a shot at the playoff. Although BYU, I guess, as an independent, technically could make it like a Notre Dame could. But I don't I don't know if they have the schedule for it. I haven't looked. And they're without Zach Wilson next year, so that's probably not happening. All right. Uh yeah, you know what? I t- I'm Cowboy, Oklahoma State. Okay. Oklahoma State. All right, let me hit you guys with this, okay? First and foremost, Iowa State. All right. They're returning Brock Purdy. They're returning Brees Hall. They're returning a lot of people, especially on defense. That team is a dark horse. If that team can beat Oklahoma again next year, probably twice, they'll have to. And they almost beat them twice this year. If that happens... You watch out for Iowa State because, good Lord, okay? And then, let's see here. Who else? Do, 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 do. I'll agree with that Indiana one. I'll agree with that Indiana one. I, I, although they won't win the Big Ten, obviously. But, if for some, if, if for some reason, they manage to, you know, do some things. Run the table. Do, do, do some miracle things somehow next year. Uh, I could see them being a dark horse contender there for sure. And uh, let's see one more. <sighs> Goodness, probably probably an SEC team. I would imagine. I'd have to pick. No, you know what? I'm going to say USC. I'm going to say the Trojans. I think with a full season under their belt, I think they can win the Pac-12 th- this coming year. And uh, I, I have faith in Clay Helton. I think he can get him to a playoff. I'll say USC for that four for that four spot. But I'm crazy for saying LSU. Yeah. Okay. What are, are they all of a sudden going to be great again? They took a Man. they took a nosedive. This is a team that's like a once in a blue moon team. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, you basically already did a Hot Wheels hat take. So there you go. Yeah. I yep. I won't even play the intro for LSU, it. LSU is a, is a contender. Wait, hold on. Let, let, me, let me just play the intro for it just because. Okay, here we go. All right, say it. LSU is going to be a contender. Oh, baloney. I'm not even going to give you another word. Uh, Screw that. Uh, Ill will, do you got words of wisdom for us today? 
Honestly, I have no words of wisdom. All right, to say. we'll skip it. Screw it. Actually, after, after his, his after his takes, he doesn't. Don't, know. don't don't go with no Indiana people. That's some words of wisdom. <laughs> there's right no there. Yoda, there's no Yoda <laughs> words here. Okay, folks. <laughs> there's no Yoda <laughs> words here. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, we went a little longer than we intended to, so we'll uh we're. We have to actually get out of here, unfortunately. Uh, we'll actually we're going to talk about this Urban thing next week. We'll give it. We'll give us some time to see what uh who Urban's going to potentially hire and take away from Ohio State, and just some general thoughts about that. Uh, so we'll definitely get in that next week. We apologize, we couldn't get it in this week. Um, but I hope you enjoyed watching the show today. Uh, we thank our sponsors, Mojo Sports Gear and the Theater People. Uh. Check some checks out some of these uh, shows on Score and Air Network. We got Travis's other show, Perfect Ten. Uh, make sure you Perfect Ten Sports and, Show. Tomorrow. And you want to you want to plug your uh, newly renamed show? Yes. yes, to the Turnbuckle, which is a show hosted by myself, Logan Morris, and Jason McCarthy. That is on Tuesdays from five to eight. It is a wrestling show. We talk about all things pro wrestling from AEW to WWE. We have a lot of fun. We get as crazy as this show Woo! gets. It's a lot of fun, but a lot of cool guys. You know, I have a lot of fun. So check Formerly it out. Known as Logan. Tuesdays, Friday. Formerly known as Logan. Formerly Logan. Yes. And don't forget the big sports show coming with yours truly. It Love will. It. Stay tuned for the information. It's going to be on everything. All right, folks. This has been the Buckeye Bro Show. I'm your host, Alex Bryan, a.k.a. King Buckeye, as always. And I'd like to thank Ill Will Will Candy for joining us once again today. And of course, yes, my main man, my Buckeye bro, my my co-host in crime, Hot Wheels, Travis Snapper. Thank you. Later, bros and bros. I will never let you live down this LSU take. And uh, we will, Indiana. I will definitely bring that up. I've never next. let him live down some of his either. So right. Okay. I will Indiana. definitely be bringing up that again next week because that bears repeating. I might even clip it for the show. I might even replay that crap because that was just wow. Okay. All <laughs> right. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next Thursday at 8 30. Right. This is the, the Buckeye Bro Show. This is the Buckeye Bro Show on Score on Air Net. Thank you.